What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmiston here from Schwartz Edmiston Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna look at how to create this cool image hover effect from the Squarespace Circle website on Squarespace. So let's just think about uh, the structure of this effect. So basically what we need to do is we need to take the frame of the image and shrink it in while scaling up the image. So uh, it's gonna be sort of like a two-step process. And so when thinking about how we could scale down the frame of the image without affecting the image itself, because you can't just change the width and the height of the image. Um, you know, the frame of the image and the image itself have to move independently of each other. And so I immediately thought of the clip path generator. And what CSS Clip Path does is it allows you to uh, scale the basically the edge of the div independent of whatever is inside the div. So basically, what we want to do is we want to take the Clip Path and and move it from being 100% of the image inwards, and so it like you know it looks like there's a frame around the image now. So to get to this, you can just Google like CSS Clip Path Maker. I'll have the link in the description below. Um, so you just kind of want to get it close. And I think like a 3% border is a good amount. So then you can uh, copy and paste the Clip Path CSS that it spits out. And uh, we're, we'll just paste it into the custom CSS window for now. Um, and we'll we'll get to that in a little bit. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to look at the structure of the image. Uh, and right now, so we're first going to do it. This is an image card block. So we have to find a container that houses the image that will be a good candidate for scaling down and hiding the, the edge of the image. So um, if I hover over, let's make this a little bit smaller. Um, if I hover over this uh, SQS block image outer wrapper, all of these classes, design layout card, when I hover over this container, you can see that this houses the words as well as the image. So this would not be a good candidate for scaling down because it, when we hover over this card block, it'll scale inwards over the words too. So, so that's not a good candidate. We need to find like the outermost container that just houses the image. And so that happens to be this intrinsic class. So you can see when I hover over it, only the image is highlighted. So that's perfect. So we're gonna take this intrinsic class and we target classes with a period. I'll open up some curly brackets. And what I'm gonna do is just copy this clip path inside. So now you can see immediately, if I comment that out again, the frame of the image changes. So perfect. All we have to do is refine it a little bit and then add some a transition and that part of it will be complete. So we want a 3% border. So 3%, 3%, we'll change this to 97 and three, 97, 97, three and 97. Cool, so now we have an even 3% uh, border around the image. Great, okay. So the next thing that we wanna do, let's, let's establish the before and after states. So uh, when the image is just normal, we want this clip path to be like 100% of its frame. So this should be 100, this will be zero, this will be 100, this will be 100, zero, and 100. Perfect, okay, and then when it's hovered, this will be our hover state. So now you can see when we hover over it, we get the image uh, cropping in, which is perfect. So now all we have to do is add a transition to the before state. Basically it's default state. 
And so we'll give it a transition of all. Let's do like 0.3 seconds and we can give it some easing. So now really nice kind of cropping effect on the image when it's hovered over. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to scale up the image when the intrinsic class is hovered over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down here and within this hover state, because when this intrinsic class is hovered, we want it to affect the image. I'm going to open up some curly brackets and we're going to set a transform scale and we'll just scale it up to like 1.1. So now you can see the image jumps up. It's very abrupt. Doesn't look good yet because we have to specify its default state, which will just be a scale of one. And then we can copy this transition, apply it to the image's default state. And now it scales up nicely because it has a transition. So perfect. That is, uh, we have it totally locked in and good to go for the image card block. Uh, you can see it affects all image card blocks. If I go to the about page, I have a regular block and you, you'll see that this also affects regular blocks as well. Perfect, we have that style being applied. Looks great. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the U page because I have a summary carousel here and I'd love for this effect to also apply to the summary carousel. So if we want to add more containers to this effect. The way we have it set up right now, uh, it's not very conducive to that because we'd have to add a new class here. So let's find the container that would work for the summary carousel. So we're gonna scroll all the way up until we find something that only contains the image. So the outer, outermost container that only contains the image. So summary thumbnail outer container is the class that we would want for this effect. So with how we have it currently set up, I would copy that class and I would separate it with a comma. And then I would have to come down here, add that class, and then also give it a hover state. And so now it affects, let's see, Okay, so it is working. The image is jumping a lot. Um, and so I figured this out when I was first doing the video. So the image already has a transition of opacity on it uh, because when the image loads in, they like fade it in. Um, and so you can only have one transition on an element at a time. So because they already have a transition style, Squarespace does by default, my transition style is not rendering. Um, and you can see it's down here, crossed out. That's because we're, we're only targeting, uh, our CSS that we wrote is less specific than Squarespace's styling. We have a class uh, and an image attribute, and they have two classes and an image attribute. So their styling is overriding ours. So an easy way to just make sure that our style gets rendered is to add an important tag to our transition. And so now it'll, it'll zoom in and out, transform smoothly. So that solves that problem. But as I said before, like if we want to add multiple classes, we're gonna have to do it in two places and it's just extra CSS that we don't have to write if we were to set it up differently. So instead of, instead of uh, using this multiple class structure, instead of having to specify the class names specifically, um, what I can do is I'm just gonna delete those. I'm gonna copy this, C or I'm gonna cut this CSS and I'm gonna paste it in within the closing bracket uh, of this opening curly bracket. And once I paste it in, I'm gonna add an ampersand. And what this does, you'll see that it now works just as it did before. So the ampersand basically 
what it says is, so anything that's up here, just duplicate that. So now we can just declare this one hover style with the ampersand, and we can add as many classes as we want for as many different elements as we want this effect to apply to, and we don't have to add them in two places, we can just add it in one. So that's a really handy tool uh, because Squarespace's CSS window uses less, which is a CSS preprocessor, and it allows you to do some of these extra cool things. So nesting and this cool shortcut of ampersand is a great tool to cut down on the amount of CSS that we have to write. So now we can move forward only adding classes in one place. So another thing that I want to do is add it to the blog list. And then I think that'll just about cover every image that I want to add it to. So once again, as we did before, I'm going to right click on the image and we have to find the outermost container that only contains the image. Okay, and I apologize if you can hear the dog barking in the background, but I am too far in to turn back now, so I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, so it looks like the outermost class is this unnamed div right here. So it doesn't have a class that we can target, and we obviously can't just target div, otherwise every div on the website will be targeted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a class from this article class, and it looks like blog item is a very simple one that we can use, it's very descriptive. So I like, I like that class to be used here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna target the, a, we're gonna target any div within this blog item container but because we have multiple divs here, we also don't want to target this, this content div. Um, so we're only going to target the first child. So any div that is the first child of this blog item container will be targeted. So we'll target that class dot blog item. Then we'll use the immediate child selector and we'll say div first child. So this is a great use of comp complex selectors here to select that div that doesn't have a class. Now you can see, boom, we're getting that effect perfectly. So not only did we create a really awesome effect that works on uh, all of our different types of images on the website, but through this tutorial, hopefully you got some cool learning about nesting uh, using ampersand and also some complex selectors to target classes or to target elements that don't have classes or IDs. So that is it for this video. If you want to copy the CSS from this video, the link will be in the description below. That's all for me guys. Have a good week. I will see you in the next one.